Hey gang, how's it going? Welcome to my studio. This is Paint with Lovejoy. Thank you so much for joining me today. In this video, I'm gonna go over the steps on how to paint a really cute Labrador. And it is a bit of a cartoon style, so it's gonna be a lot of fun. This particular video in this series of videos was actually prompted from one of my more popular classes at my studio. And my most popular class is actually Paint Your Pet. The majority, I would say 100% of my students are fall into two categories. They are either first time painters or they are beginner painters. But everybody is in the early stages of their creative process and their creative evolution. And that is why I started this particular video series is because I want my students to paint at home. I want you to get more comfortable with your tools. I want you to get more practice with the process of painting. And the only way you're gonna do that is through practice. So I do hope these videos um, get you more comfortable with that process. So what you're gonna see with um, these videos, in the link below, you're gonna see what I call a kit. And in that kit is the exact supplies, colors, brushes, tools, that I use for this particular painting, just to make it kind of easier for you to grab everything that you need to do just this painting. So check that out below. The other thing that you're gonna see in this video is what we call a traceable. And a traceable is your way to get that initial image of the Labrador um, on your canvas or your panel before you even start painting. So do check out the other video that I have on how to transfer your traceable. It's gonna give you a few options on how to do that. To acquire the traceables, you've got a few options. If you're one of my patron supporters, you get the traceables for free. It's included in your monthly membership. Um, so go ahead and download those there. If you're not one of my patron supporters, you can still purchase the traceable and download it um, from the link below and you can use this traceable as many times as you want. So it's not a one time purchase and then it's done. You download it, you can use it forever. If you don't wanna go the traceable route, the other option for you is pause the video at a specific time frame and look at the screen and draw what you see on your canvas. So that way, again, you have your initial image before we even pick up a paintbrush on your canvas or your panel. If you have any questions about the traceables or it's a little confusing, leave those in the comments below and I'll do my best to answer those as quickly as I can. Um, but again, just the traceables are really nice to have your base image on there before you start painting. So I think that kind of takes care of the logistics before we start painting. Let's go ahead and get our supplies together and get creating. Okay guys, hope you've got your setup all ready to go with your supplies. I do want you to turn on your favorite music and if you're at home by yourself, turn it up. If not, put some headphones on, but stuff you like listening to. As always, make sure you take your progress photos. Uh, it'll be awesome to look at tomorrow. Now with this painting, like a few of the other ones, we are gonna be outlining our lines first with black paint. So I am using the small pointy brush and using straight black paint and going right on top of those lines that we uh, transferred from that traceable or if you drew it freehand. Now, as you're drawing these lines, you're gonna notice that the harder you push your brush against the canvas, the whiter the line it makes. And then the lighter you touch your brush to the canvas, the skinnier the lines it makes. So kind of play with this as we're at this stage. And if you have some areas where you have thicker lines and other areas where they're thinner, don't stress about that. We will be repeating this step at the end of class or at the end of this painting. And this is a good place to practice and just get comfortable with your brushes, with the pressure of your brush. And this is one of those things that the more that you do it, the more comfortable you get. Now, when you get to the eyes, you'll notice that I did fill in the pupil of the eye and I left the catch light white. 
So you do want to make sure that you kind of take note of which is which when you're filling that in. If you do happen to fill in that catch light, don't stress. You can put it on there again at the end of the painting uh, with some pure white paint. So yeah, as you're doing this, if you're finding that you actually hold, are holding your breath right now, I want you to take a deep inhale and relax. Maybe laugh at yourself a little bit because you didn't realize you were holding your breath. But again, I don't want you taking this process super serious. This is just practice. You're going to get better and more comfortable, and that's all I want you to do with this. All right, so go ahead, pause the video, take a look at where all those lines are, take your progress picture, and we're gonna be moving into the next step and we'll be painting the background. Now I am using light blue, I'm taking some white and adding a little bit of blue to it, but you can use any color that you like. And I am using the small flat brush. And as I'm applying it, if you happen to overlap some of those black lines, that's okay. If those black lines are still wet paint, be kind of cautious when you come uh, next to those black lines with your background color. If you do happen to get some black paint in your background color, just use a paper towel and wipe it off and then reapply your background color. Or you can let it dry and just paint right on top of it. So as we go through the painting today, I'm gonna to encourage you to trust your instincts. And a lot of times when you trust your instincts during the creative process, um, it's naturally where you should be going anyway. Your instincts are trying to get you in that direction. So if you feel like using a different color or maybe using a, a color or a brush stroke that you don't normally try, give it a try. See what you think about it, see how it feels. Um, you're never going to know anything unless you give it a try. And this is just acrylic paint. If you trust your instincts and paint something and later on you really just don't like it, you just paint right on top of it again. This is a really versatile medium for beginner painters. Now as you've got your background on there, if you want to make one area darker or lighter than another area, you're gonna see that I take some of the darker blue and paint right on top of my lighter blue with it. And basically all you're doing is you're mixing the colors directly on the canvas. And the more that you move your brush, the more the two colors mix together. So it's exactly what you're doing on your plate when you mix your colors. We're just doing it on the background instead. Nice. Now as you're painting, if you want kind of a smooth finish, you can move your brush on there really lightly and that kind of smooths out the paint. If you want a more painterly or expressive style, you can push your brush a little bit harder against the canvas and that allows some of your brush strokes to show up more. So pause the video and take another progress picture of your work. And here we're going to be moving into some of the darker shades of the ears of our little golden lab here, or yellow lab. So we're taking some light sienna, some raw sienna, and adding some white to it. I'm gonna go a little bit darker, so kind of going for kind of a medium shade. And on these little yellow labs, they do have those really dark ears and then kind of a white creamy body. So we are starting with the dark ears first. And I do realize that my hand gets in the way sometimes. Um, these are some of my beginning videos, so I am trying different angles and ways to shoot stuff. Um, so I do want you to utilize these sections where you can pause the video and look at all the spaces and the shapes of the color that I just applied. And you get to kind of use your power of observation and look at the shape. What is it next to? What does it look like? Is it a shape of a triangle and maybe a circle combined? but you're, you're learning to kind of use your eye and your brain in a new way as you observe the shapes and then apply those to your own canvas. And as I make more and more of these videos, you'll actually see where I grow. So yeah, here's a place to pause your video, check out the kind of the perimeter of the ear of where the darker shades were put on. And then now you're taking a very light, even lighter 
raw sienna color to fill in the inside of the ears. And if those colors are still wet, you can blend the two shades together and kind of soften that transition from the darker to the lighter. If your paint's already dry right now, just kind of leave that, um, that sharp line or that perimeter and that just kind of becomes part of your style for this painting. All right, so still using that light sienna. We're gonna start adding some of these colors around the face. And again, this is a really light Labrador, little puppy here. So we are gonna be using some shades of cream and gray to create our shading. Because if we painted white on a white canvas, we wouldn't have much depth or much volume. All right. Still adding a little bit more of that cream color. And it is gonna be the, the light is coming from the right hand side. So more of our shadows are gonna be on the left hand side of the face of this Labrador. And as you paint this one today, I'm actually gonna encourage you to maybe paint a little bit faster. So that way you can blend some of these colors. And the only way that you can really physically blend them is while the paint is still wet. So paint a little bit faster, look at these shapes that you're making um, with each color and then move into the next color. And where the two colors meet, use your finger, or use your brush and blend the two together. And again, you're just getting a comfort level and a practice with using these tools. All right, so pause the video, take a look at those shapes and where they are placed. We're going to go back to the ears and add a bit more of a shadow. So you're going to take more of your direct or your straight raw sienna. We're going to be adding this to the edges, the tips of the ears. On that right ear, kind of where the ear meets the, the face. And again, I'm used still using that flat brush and sometimes I use it skinny weight, skinny version to where it's creating a small line. And then for bigger spaces, I'll use the wide portion of the brush. All right, so pause the video and you can see where the darker shade was added. And you're gonna clean your brush. All right, so now we're going to be adding some shading to our light colored dog. So I was taking some of that white and that raw sienna, mixing it together for a really light color, and then I'm adding a little bit of black to that. So that way we can make kind of a really light grayish with a hint of brown in there. And again, like I said, we're painting a light dog and we're using some shades of gray to create our shading. We will put our lighter colors on top of some of these shades so it won't look so so gray or so dark by the time we're done. All right, so just adjusting the color here, going a little bit darker. And again, I'm still using that flat brush and using kind of the skinnier, the longer portion of that brush to create these smaller lines. And going around the perimeter of the face I am overlapping some of that light raw sienna color. And again, if your paint is still wet, you can blend where the two colors meet. Putting a little bit of a darker shadow on behind the ear on the back area, because again, we do have our light coming from the right hand side. Now, one of the things that I like about painting is you're going to realize that you're going to be so focused on what you're painting and these shapes that you're looking at that you're actually going to forget that the world exists outside of this painting. And that's one of the beautiful things about art and the creative process. This is your space. This is just your creativity, your outlet from the craziness of this world, from the drama, from the weird things that happen. This is just you. There is no right or wrong way how to paint here and just your space to relax. 
And one of the cool things is you'll be so focused on this for, you know, an hour, a couple of hours that you'll feel better when you're done. And then the next day you may actually look forward to going, oh, you know what? I got to go paint something. And I hope you do. That's your instincts telling you to go paint again. Trust that. Listen to that. This world is too crazy. We need some more relaxed people. So do what you can to calm your mind, calm yourself. And if painting is it, enjoy it. All right, so still adding some light gray shading here. And again, I'm using that flat brush and now using a bit more of the wider end and just almost making little dots that overlap or even little X marks. But again, just kind of using small brush strokes to create a All right, so we're gonna be using a lighter raw sienna. So you can just add some white to the grayish raw sienna that you were just using. And we're still filling in some more of the shadow areas, creating this illusion that we can put some more white paint on top of to create a nice volume. And again, mind your breathing, take a deep breath. If you were holding your breath, this is just an easy reminder to just say, relax, let it go. If you do have any stress or frustrations, put it into the paint, put it into the brush strokes. That's what they're for. And again, if your paint is still wet when you reach one of your other shades, feel free to blend the two seams, the two areas where the colors meet. And we are using this light color. We're gonna fill in a good majority of our remaining canvas space here. And we'll get to almost what we call our underpainting when there is no canvas space left. And those of you that may be doing this painting for a second or third time, as always, I encourage you to swap out colors. Maybe instead of the raw sienna, maybe you use red. Maybe you use purple. Instead of white, maybe you use yellow. You know, feel free to swap out colors. Maybe instead of gray, you actually go crazy and you use orange. Uh, get expressive. It's the only way you're going to find out how the stuff works for you. And that's all you're doing is finding your comfort level, your practice with these tools so you know what you can get out of them. And even if it's just a place to escape and act like a five-year-old, this is your space to do that. Alright, this guy's coming along quite nicely with only a few shades and a few simple colors. Alright, so go ahead and pause the video, take your photograph your progress photo. And now we're going to continue. We're going to make some light gray. And I've moved on to the pointy brush so that way I can make some smaller lines, smaller dots. And this light gray is going around some of the eye area and the nose. Now going for a medium gray so we can fill in more of the nose space. And you will notice sometimes that maybe you make the color on your plate and then when you apply it to your canvas, it looks entirely different. What you are witnessing is a little bit of color theory. 
we interpret our colors based on the color that's right next to it. So sometimes when you make that color on your plate, it may look dark enough, but then when you put it next to another color, you're like, whoa, it's gotta be darker or it's gotta be lighter. Feel free to adjust. There is no perfect formula for painting. Now that dark gray, we were adding some more eyeliner and shading around the eyes. It will tone down once we get some eye color on there. And we're filling in some more areas on the nose, underneath the nose. Let's go ahead and pause your video. Take your progress photo. And again, we're going for an even darker gray. Filling in more of the nose. Again, it amazes me how much better I feel when uh, on the painting there's no canvas space left. And right now even those eyes are kind of intense for me, so I'm ready for them to have some color. But we're getting there. We're filling in more of our shades of gray on our nose. And again, at any point, feel free to pause the video and see where those particular shades are and the shapes those shades are making. And again, breathe and relax. If you do find that maybe you're clenching your hand really tight on your brush, relax a little bit. All right, so going for an even darker gray. Filling in the rest of the nose. And again, if you happen to go outside the lines, don't stress about it. Turn your music up a little bit more. Know that we'll get around to it. And it's just paint. I do tell a lot of my students this is a very healthy addiction to have, painting can be maybe a little bit more than you want to purchase, but if you imagine comparing it to what you purchase for a vacation or going out to the movies, to dinner, it's not that bad of an investment. And if it makes you feel good, you should do it. Again, so pause the video, check out where those shades of gray are around the eyes and on the nose. And then we're gonna be moving into getting some eye color on our dog. All right, so now we're gonna be painting the eyes. And for this, I'm gonna be using burnt sienna, but you can choose any color that you like. If you would like your lab to have one blue eye, one brown eye, feel free to do that, or hazel or purple eyes, totally your call. And I am using the small pointy brush and filling in the eye color. And again, if you happen to go over those black lines, don't stress. All right, so now I'm gonna grab a little raw sienna, the little lighter, and on the outside of the eye, I'm gonna put a little bit of a, a highlight on there. And I'm gonna do this on both eyes. And it's almost kind of like it makes a parentheses around the eyes. And again, that's kind of hugging the shape, that curve, and just giving an extra highlight. Now we're actually gonna go back to black paint. I'm gonna go back and give some eyeliner around the eyes, kind of sets that eyeball in the eye socket. And for the pupils, I'm gonna have you go back over those pupils and I want you to shave down that white catch light just a little bit. It's almost a little bigger than I would like it to be. So using your black paint in the pupil, shave down and make that white circle just a little bit smaller. All right, then you're gonna, I think, clean your brush. I'm gonna go back to the flat brush. And we're gonna go back to some of those colors that we were already working with and start layering them on top of our lab's fur. So we're gonna take our light raw sienna, and that was your white with your raw sienna, and we're gonna start placing it on top of some of the other colors we already put out there and diffusing some of those shades. So again, you'll see when we get to that point to pause the video, some of the places where I am putting that light raw sienna. 
And if you feel like you have a space that's really bold or darker than you would like to, feel free to try putting some of this color there. Trust your instincts. If you're maybe feeling like you want to put this in another area that I don't place it, do that for yours. Give it a try. Alright, so now we're going to be making a medium gray. We're going to intensify some of our shadows, make some of our dark spaces darker. And that's just going to be kind of around the chin. We got a little bit besides the ears. And just kind of intensifying, like I said, some of our shadow areas, increasing our contrast. Alright, so using that same color, I'm just going to pick up some of that raw sienna, make it a little bit more brown, and go into some of the darker tan areas that we have. And again, we're increasing that contrast, increasing some intensity. Alright, so adding a little bit more white to that mixture that we were just using. And again, as I'm applying some of these brush strokes, I'm not putting all my brush strokes right next to each other. I am allowing some of that underneath color to kind of shine through. Because kind of like that color theory that we were talking about earlier, the color I put this next to affects how we interpret it. Or allowing a color from underneath affects the color that we place on top of it when we visually interpret it. So again, we're just playing. We're applying color, seeing how it looked, trying something different if we need to, adjusting. And again, as we're doing this part, remember to either take your progress pictures or step away from your painting and look at it from a distance. Some of these colors and sections may look too much if we stay so close and we're only two feet away from the canvas. You got to go back, step away and get that perspective. All right, so now taking some white, and just like we were doing with the darker colors, we're going to lay some lighter colors on top of here. Again, allowing some of the colors from underneath to either shine through in between the brush strokes or applying the paint a little bit thinner so we still have that volume, still have some of that depth. And again, when we get to the point to pause the video or at any point in between, just pause the video and use your power of observation to just see where that particular color was placed. And then again, take that perspective, take that step back so you can see how it's translating from a distance. Half of art is learning to kind of just get out of our own way and step back and look at it from a different perspective. Also, with that being said, by the time we're, you know, 45 minutes to an hour or two hours into a painting, your brain is really oversaturated with the process and your brain remembers how white the canvas was when you started. So sometimes we're our own worst critic when it comes to our progress and how well we're actually doing. So again, try to find those reminders, those tricks that you can keep your brain kind of on its toes, still finding your ways to look at it from a new perspective. All right, so again, we're taking our white paint and adding it in a few key areas for highlights. And it may feel weird to add some of this white on top of the darker areas, but again, notice how the colors play with each other and how they affect the way we interpret them. All right, so going back to black paint, All right, so pause the video, take your progress picture. And we're gonna go on with black paint. We're gonna do a little more details around the eyes and the eyeliner. 
You'll see little kind of dots expanding that kind of distinctive eyeliner that Labradors have. A few of their little eyebrows up there. I'm just making little dots with my small pointy brush. All right. And again, it may feel like you're making them too dark or too big, but if you think about it, Labradors have those intense eyes. And by making dots, it kind of diffuses some of that intensity so it's not just a solid line. So now we're actually gonna grab some white paint and we're gonna be going over the fur and bringing this Labrador back to a little bit of a lighter creamy color. So we will be painting on top of some of our other shades here. All right, and I'm using the flat, small flat brush and just using actually straight white paint and painting right on top of some of these other colors. And like we stated before, do make sure that you get out of your chair and look at this from a distance as you're going into some of these details. So that way you can train your eye of what it will look like from a distance. And don't feel bad because everything in life, people, places, artwork, things, all look better from a distance. So don't feel bad if you actually like your painting more on your cell phone from that distance or from the back of the room. All right, so pause the video, take a look and see where that white was added and any other details that you might need to add. All right, so we're actually gonna add a little bit more shadow. So going for that gray, light raw sienna. Gonna break up some of the space that we just put on there. And like I said, painting is a lot about a back and forth. You are conversing with your canvas or with your surface and the paint that you're putting on it. And sometimes you may put some color on there and it makes something else stand out in an awkward way and you have to go adjust that. It is constantly a back and forth. That is why there are so many different styles out there, so many different ways that we paint based on how we're feeling. So that's why this is a healthy outlet to have in your world. Even if you end up not liking some of the things that you paint, it's okay, keep painting. So again, pause your video, take your progress picture, and then we're gonna be going back to black using that small pointy brush and going back to our outlines. And again, these outlines are gonna be a little bit thicker than the first time that we did them. If you like your painting as is, you do not have to do these black outlines, totally optional. If your paint isn't quite fluid enough or maybe it's been sitting out for a while, you can add a touch of water to your paint Again, you never want to add more than 30% water and you never want your brush dripping wet with water. If you have a little bit of matte medium, you can add that to your paint as well. That will help extend it or some slow dry fluid. Feel free again to experiment with different things and find out what you like and don't like about working with paint. Now, since you downloaded the traceable for this image, I'm gonna encourage you to not only do this painting again and maybe swap out colors, but maybe transfer that traceable to a regular sheet of paper and do it with crayons. Do it if you're babysitting your niece or nephew or you've got kids, do it with them. Do it with colored pencils. You don't have to only use this for painting, but keep having different creative outlets. You can treat that traceable kind of like a coloring book page, actually. Nice. As you're doing your lines, if some of them happen to be a little bit thicker and others skinnier, again, that's okay. This is your handwriting and painting style for today. And when you paint, you will have good days. You will have not so good days. That's part of life. Don't let those not so good days keep you from painting. Keep giving it a try, even if you have a bad day. You will learn a lot from those. And again, sometimes it's just more about the process of actually painting. Doesn't matter what you paint, but just 
find that escape, find that, that space for yourself to just be a part of a process. And again, breathe as you're making these lines. Maybe sing if your favorite music's on right now. Smile at your painting. Think about a cute lab that you knew as a kid or that you currently know, or maybe it's a friend's dog. But put those thoughts into this painting. It is amazing how much those kind of evolve and the paint holds on to it. All right, and with this, you're getting really good practice with your lines and your brush control. As you're taking your progress pictures, keep those for a long time, because in a year from now, I want you to look back at your progress pictures and see how much further you've come since then. So again, even if it feels awkward right now, it's not going to feel as awkward the next time. Something else may feel awkward, but that's just part of the process. I'm proud of you for coming this far and already painting and painting at home. It takes a lot of courage to paint at home and not have uh, instruction with somebody standing right there with you. So you're doing a great job. All right, and I hope these are turning out really cute. It is amazing how much those black lines really sum it up to be kind of a cartoon image and give it such personality. Um, those of you switching out colors, I've had a few people do these and they've actually, instead of a black outline, they did a red or a, a magenta color outline. Really cool, really pop art style. So again, feel free to swap out colors if you do this again or doing it for the first time. All right, so now I'm actually taking a little bit of white and adding a few extra little highlights. We'll be putting those on the nose and just a few extra little highlights around the eyes. Again, using the small pointy brush and I am using very minimal pressure as I apply these because these are small, tiny little lines. Again, feel free to pause the video, zoom in a little bit closer if you need to see that. As I create my future videos, I will be trying a few different angles, uh, trying multiple cameras and just different things to kind of keep you guys engaged and help it to see what you're looking at a little bit more. All right. So as always, thanks you guys so much for painting with me. It is a pleasure and congratulations for painting. Have a great day. Hey gang, how's it going? I hope your Labradors turned out super cute. Thank you so much for painting with me today. As you're uploading your paintings to social media, please tag me in your paintings. Tag me at paint with Lovejoy. I really like to see what you create and I like to see how you evolve with the process. So please tag me in your photos. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, go ahead and do that. Check out the other videos, leave comments on future videos that you'd like me to create, uh, different subject matters, different dog breeds, different uh, animals that you would like me to put in this series. I will do that. So question of the day. What was your favorite part about today's painting? Why did you like it? Was it just mixing the paint? Was it blending your background? Was it doing the outline at the end of the painting? Let me know. I am curious how you guys are interpreting these videos. And through your comments, that's how I get to engage with you. So I think that kind of takes care of everything. I'm greatly, greatly, greatly appreciative of your time. Um, and taking some uh, space out of your day to get creative. So keep on painting, keep practicing, and uh, I look forward to evolving with you. Cheers.
my studio. Plane. I really wish they would go reverse. All right, All right the millionth time is the charm, apparently. Okay. While we wait for the plane, we're gonna pick up. This is why I started the video. And that is why I, I, 